how to host a Counter-Strike 2 CS2 game server on a DigitalOcean Ubuntu Virtual Private Server, VPS, or Droplet. In this video, I'll take you through the complete process of setting up your Counter-Strike 2 game server. We'll first begin by creating our virtual private server and installing the Counter-Strike 2 game server. The server host provider that we're going to be installing our CS2 game server on is called DigitalOcean. Once we have installed the CS2 game server onto our VPS, we'll then need to create a Steam game server login token. To do this, we'll need to get the Counter-Strike 2 game ID or app ID. We can get this from a website called SteamDB. Once we have got that, we can then enter that game ID into the Steam game server account management page and create our CS2 game server login token. Once we've created our game server login token, we'll need to log into our VPS using Putty. Putty is an SSH client which allows us to directly communicate with our CS2 game server. We'll be using this to configure our CS2 game server and enter our Steam game server login token. We'll also be using Putty to configure other game settings such as the CS2 map for our server, the game mode, the name of our server and many other config settings. Let's begin by setting up our VPS and installing the Counter-Strike 2 game server onto it. The first thing you'll need to do is navigate to the following URL address. This URL address is my referral link and will give you $200 in free DigitalOcean Cloud credits to try out their servers free for 60 days. I'll put my referral link in the video description below. If you don't have a DigitalOcean account already, you'll need to create a free account by entering in your email address, picking a password, and then click on create free account. You can also sign up with your Google account or GitHub account. Now I already have a DigitalOcean account, so I'm simply going to click on sign in to be signed into my DigitalOcean dashboard or control panel. Once you have created your DigitalOcean account, you'll also be taken to your DigitalOcean dashboard. At the top right hand corner, you'll be able to see your free DigitalOcean account cloud credits if you signed up using my referral link. To create our CS2 game server, you'll need to navigate to the top right of the page and click on the green create button. You'll then see a drop down list. At the very top of the drop down list, you should see droplets, which is a service that allows you to create cloud servers. Click on droplets. Next, we'll need to choose a region for our droplet. The region that you choose should be located very close to you. This will give you the best ping and therefore the best lag-free experience on your server. Currently I'm in Asia, so therefore I'm going to be picking the Singapore server. Again, regarding the region, make sure you pick a region that is closest to you and your friends. This will give you the most lag-free experience. Scroll down until you see where it says choose an image. OS should be selected by default. There's also marketplace and custom images. Click on Marketplace. Underneath, you should see a search box. Click in the search box and type Counter Space Strike 2. Once you've done that, you should see the Counter Strike 2 droplet one click. Click on it to select it. Scroll down until you see where it says choose size. For your droplet type, you have two options, shared CPU and dedicated CPU. By default, shared CPU should already be pre-selected. If it isn't, click on basic to select the basic shared CPU plan. Scroll down until you see where it says CPU options. For your CS2 game server, it is highly recommended to choose a premium Intel or premium AMD CPU. I'm going to be going with premium Intel, which gives you also a disk of an NVMe SSD. So I'm just going to click on premium Intel. Underneath, you'll see a list of plans. The plan recommended for your CS2 game server is a server that has at least 4 gigabytes of RAM and two CPUs. Therefore, the $32 a month premium Intel plan is recommended for the CS2 game server, which gives you 4 gigabytes of RAM, two Intel CPUs, 120 gigabytes of storage in the form of NVMe SSDs, and four terabytes of bandwidth transfer. Click on this plan to select it. Once you've selected your plan, scroll down until you see where it says choose authentication method. Click on password and then you should see create root password. Click on this box here and choose a root password for your CS2 game server droplet. The password requirements must be at least eight characters long, must contain one uppercase letter, cannot be first or last character, must contain one number, cannot end in a number or special character. Once you've picked a root password, scroll down until you see where it says host name. This will give your droplet a name that you can identify it from your droplet list. So click on this box here and delete whatever is already pre-typed by default. I'm going to enter in here cs2-server. Once you've done that, all that's left to do is to create droplet by clicking on create droplet. DigitalOcean will then begin creating your droplet and installing the Counter-Strike 2 game server onto it. It should take about five minutes for the installation to complete. I'll be back with you guys once this progress bar completes. All right, I'm back. 
DigitalOcean actually took a bit longer than five minutes to install our CS2 game server, so just be aware of that in case it takes a bit longer for you also. You'll know your CS2 game server is up and running, and that is indicated by the green status circle on the left hand side of your droplet. The next thing we'll need to do is create our Steam game server login token. To do this, open up another tab in your browser and navigate to the following URL address, steamcommunity.com slash dev slash manage game servers. Once here, you'll be on the Steam game server account management page. You'll need to log into your Steam account, navigate to the top right hand corner and click on login. Once here, sign in with your account name and enter in your password. If you don't already have a Steam account, you'll need to create one. I'm now going to enter my Steam account login details. Once you've entered in your Steam account name and your password, click on sign in. Now I have an email authenticator activated on my Steam account, so I'll just need to enter the code that was emailed to me in my email address inbox. Once you've performed the authentication required on your Steam account, you'll be logged into the Steam Game Server account management page. To create a CS2 Game Server login token, your account needs the following requirements. So your Steam account must not be currently community banned or locked. Your Steam account must not be limited. Your Steam account must have qualifying registered phone. Your Steam account must own the game for which you are creating a game server account for. Your Steam account may create a thousand game server accounts. Scroll down until you see where it says create a new game server account. Underneath it says app ID of the base game. So we'll need to enter the Steam app ID or game ID into this text box. To get the Counter-Strike 2 game ID or app ID, we'll need to open up another tab in our browser and navigate to the following URL address, steamdb.info. Once you're here, at the very top, you should see a search box. Click on this search box and then type counter-strike space 2. Once you've done that, click on Counter-Strike 2. The Steam app ID or game ID for Counter-Strike 2 is 730, so just copy the number 730. Once you've got the CS2 app ID, go back to the Steam Game Server account management page. Once here, in the app ID of the base game text box, left click on it and then paste in 730. Underneath that, there's another text box, which is your memo, which is text stored with the account just shown here to help you keep track. So in this text box, I'm just going to enter CS2-server for the memo. Once you've done that, click on create. This will then create your CS2 game server login token, which is the one starting in five and ending in four. We'll need this login token once we have logged into our CS2 game server. To log into our CS2 game server, we're going to need an SSH client. The SSH client of choice is going to be putty. To get putty, what you'll need to do is open up another tab in your browser and navigate to the following URL address, putty.org, and then click on download putty. Now putty is an SSH client available for Windows and other operating systems. If putty isn't compatible with your operating system, you'll need to find another SSH client that's compatible with your OS. Now I'm on Windows and I already have installed PuTTY, the 64-bit x87 version on my PC. If you're looking for a step-by-step -step process of installing PuTTY on your PC, I'll put a link to a video of mine in this video's description below and as a card at the top right-hand corner of this video. Now once you've installed PuTTY, you'll need to open it, so I'm just going to minimize my browser to be taken to my desktop. On your desktop, look for the PuTTY shortcut. If you don't see the PuTTY shortcut after installing PuTTY, then what you'll need to do is click on your search box on Windows and search for PuTTY and open up the program. So I'm just going to open up PuTTY by double clicking on the shortcut on my desktop here. Once done, you'll need to enter the host name or IP address of your DigitalOcean CS2 game server. To do this, open up your browser and navigate to the DigitalOcean control panel tab where you've set up your CS2 game server. From your list of droplets, locate your CS2 game server and to the right you should see your CS2 game server IP address. To the right hand side of the IP address you should see the word copy, click on copy to copy the IP address. Once you've done that, minimize your browser. Paste in your IP address into the host name or IP address box, leave the port as 22, leave the connection type as SSH, and then click on open. Once you've done that, if it's your first time connecting to your server, which of course it will be, you'll be greeted with a putty security alert, which says the server's host key is not cached in your registry. You have no guarantee that the server is the computer you think it is. You have the option to click accept, connect once or cancel. Of course, you know that this is your CS2 game server that you're connecting to. So I'm going to click on accept to add the host key to putty's cache and carry on with the connection. So I'm just going to click on accept. Once you've done that, maximize the putty terminal window. You're going to be logging in as root, so type the word root and then hit enter on your keyboard. As for your password, this is going to be the password that you chose for your DigitalOcean CS2 game server droplet. Enter that in and then hit enter on your keyboard to log in as root. And as you can see, I'm now logged in as root on my CS2 game server. What we'll now need to do 
is edit the cs2server.cfg file. We'll need to add our Counter-Strike 2 game server login token that we created earlier into the cs2server.cfg file. To do this, we'll need to copy the directory of our cs2server.cfg file. Simply copy everything from the left of where it says slash home to where it says .cfg. So I'm just going to left click and highlight all this directory to where it says .cfg. And this will automatically copy this directory onto our clipboard from Putty. Next, what we'll need to do is type the following command. So type nano space and then right click to paste in the directory of your cs2 server.cfg file. Once you've done that, simply hit enter on your keyboard. You'll then be inside your cs2 server.cfg file. Once here, you can start editing your cs2 game server details. So for example, at the very top here, it says hostname, which is the hostname for your server. Currently, the hostname is set to Linux GSM. So any parameter that can be edited here is in quotation marks. So to change our cs2 game server name from Linux GSM, we're going to need to use our navigation navigation keys on our keyboard to navigate to that line and then delete the word Linux GSM. So I'm just going to do that now. And now in here you can type anything you want. So I'm going to call my CS2 game server websplaining. So I'm just going to type websplaining in here. There's lots of game server details that you can actually edit to customize your server. The next CS2 game server configuration that we're going to be dealing with is called the SV underscore set Steam account. This is the Steam game server login token that we created earlier for our CS2 game server. So we're going to be using the arrow keys to navigate in between these two quotation marks. Once done, what we'll need to do is open back up our browser and navigate to the Steam Game Server account management page. Once here, copy the CS2 server login token. So I'm just going to highlight it and then right click and then click on copy to copy it. Open back up the putty terminal window and right click to paste. Make sure of either side of your login token, the quotation marks are there. The next parameter that we can change is the starting map of your server, which is currently set to DE underscore Anubis. So again, I'm going to use my arrow keys to navigate to where it says DE Anubis, and I'm going to delete the word DE underscore Anubis. And then I'm going to open back up my browser and open up another tab and navigate to the following URL address, developer.valvesoftware.com slash wiki slash counter dash strike underscore two slash maps. Once you're here, you'll see a list of your CS2 maps. Now the map that I'm going to be setting on my CS2 game server is going to be Dust2, and you're going to be looking at the internal BSP or VPK name column. For Dust2, that's going to be DE underscore Dust2. So I'm just going to highlight it, and right click and click on copy to copy it. I'm then going to open up my putty terminal window and I'm going to right click to paste. For this video demonstration, this is going to be the last configuration that I'm going to be changing in the CS2 server.cfg file. However, you can edit this file to your heart's content. Another configuration that you might want to pay attention to is the game underscore alias, which allows you to set the game type. So currently the game alias is casual. However, you can change it to deathmatch, competitive, or wingman. I'm going to leave it as casual. Once you've done editing the CS2 server.cfg file, you'll need to save the changes you have made. To do this, simply press Ctrl plus O on your keyboard at the same time, and then hit enter on your keyboard to save those changes. Next, you'll need to exit out of the CFG file. To do this, simply press Ctrl plus X on your keyboard. The next thing we'll need to do is switch user to the Steam user. To do this, simply type SU space dash space Steam. Once you've typed that in, hit enter on your keyboard. And as you can see, we've now changed from the root user to the Steam user. It is highly recommended before you start the CS2 game server to check for updates. To do this, type dot slash CS2 server space update. Once you've typed this in, hit enter on your keyboard. Steam CMD will then search for updates and update your CS2 game server if an update is available. As you can see in this case, Steam CMD has found an update. Currently, our local build is version 13593156, and we will be updating to the remote build version 14602005. This might take a while for our CS2 game server to be updated, but I'll be back with you guys once the update progress reaches 100%. All right, guys, I'm back, and as you can see in our putty terminal window, it says success. App 730 fully installed, complete updating CS2 server. In your case, depending on when you watch this video, you may not need to update your CS2 game server. So if there isn't an update after typing the update command, just move on to the next step, which I'm about to perform. In our case, of course, Steam CMD found an update and it performed the update. The next command we're going to be typing in here is the command to start a Counter-Strike 2 game server. Type the following dot slash CS2 server space start. 
Once you've typed that in, hit enter on your keyboard. Your CS2 game server will then begin starting. All right, and as you can see, our CS2 server called Websplaining has now started. We can now close out of the putty terminal window by navigating to the top right hand corner, clicking on the X, and then clicking on OK to exit out of putty. Before we close our browser, navigate back to your Digital Ocean control panel and copy your CS2 game server IP address once again by navigating to the right hand side and clicking on copy to copy it. Now close out of your browser by navigating to the top right hand corner and clicking on the X. You'll now be on your desktop once again. All that's left to do now is to connect to our CS2 game server. To do this, you'll need to launch the Counter-Strike 2 game. So I'm just going to double click on the Counter-Strike 2 shortcut here to launch the Counter-Strike 2 game. I'll be back with you once Counter Strike 2 has started. Once you've got Counter Strike 2 open, click on play. Underneath you should see matchmaking, practice, workshop maps, and this globe or internet symbol of which when hovered over says community server browser. Click on the community server browser icon. Once you've done that, you might be greeted with the following small window which says community servers. Community servers are run by other players and offer new and different experiences from official servers. Explore, save your favorites for later and have fun. If you don't want to see this message again, click on the box next to never show again. I'm going to leave this box uncheckmarked and I'm going to click on OK. The game servers window will then open. By default, you'll be on the internet tab. Click on the favorites tab right next to it. As you can see, Currently, I don't have any favorite servers selected. To add a favorite server, navigate to the bottom to where you see the plus symbol. Click on the plus symbol to add a favorite server by IP address. Add server by IP or IP and port of your CS2 game server. So I'm going to right click in this text box and click on paste to paste in the IP address of our DigitalOcean CS2 game server. Once you've done that, type colon and then type 27015. Anything after the colon is your port, which in our case is going to be 27015. It will be the same for you. The only difference will be your DigitalOcean CS2 game server IP address. So first you'll paste in your IP address of your DigitalOcean CS2 droplet, followed by a colon, followed by 27015. Once you've done that, click on OK. This will then add your CS2 game server to your favorites. As you can see, my server name is Websplaining. The game is Counter-Strike two the map is D underscore dust 2 which is dust 2. The number of players is 0 out of 16 and this is currently my latency. The latency between you and your CS2 game server is totally dependent on the region that you selected earlier when you were creating your DigitalOcean CS2 game server droplet. To connect to this server, simply click on it to highlight it and then click on connect. Click on the minimize CS2 game. You'll then be taken into your CS2 game server. You'll then have the option to choose between T's or CT's. If you wait long enough, it will of course auto select. As you can see, we've spawned a CTs and our server is working as expected. Currently we're the only player on our server and the rest of the players are bots. However, one bot will be replaced when a real life person joins your game server. The game mode or game type of course is casual, which is the default game type, which we left as it is in the CS2 server.cfg file. All right guys, so that pretty much concludes the video on how to host a Counter-Strike 2 CS2 game server on a digital ocean Ubuntu Linux virtual private server, VPS or droplet. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like, comment down below and most importantly of all subscribe to support the channel i'll see you on the next video Wait, is it so